So just briefly, I want to talk about this passage that the family chose for today, Psalm 121. And uh, uh, it builds showing it up here. It's a little small because I wanted to have the whole thing there. And there's this little, uh, there's this little subtitle, a Psalm of Ascents, uh, which means it was uh, probably one of the psalms, probably one of the songs uh, that the Israelites sang when they were going up to the temple. Um, you know, families would go up to Jerusalem, right, that city on a hill um, where the temple was situated, and they would sing this simple song. And it's a bit basic, and maybe why so basic? Some uh, speculate that, that it was a children's song, um, a way to instruct children in the basics of the faith as they journeyed up this hill towards the temple, uh, which was the central place for worship. So Psalm 121, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches you over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. So that question that the psalm asks, you know, where does my help come from? Or as we sang in the opening uh, song, version of Psalm 121, uh, whence for me shall my salvation come? Um, you know, Israel was being invited in this psalm to answer that. You know, where does my help come from? Um, I don't know how good you are at asking for help. Um, Corin suggested that, you know, from their time in Cuba, they had an opportunity to ask for help. I don't know if it was Corin or Liana that was the one asking for help, but how are you at asking for help, right? Um, I, I, I was struck by some of the stories uh, that we even just heard of about uh, Liana. A perpetual student is the wrong way to put it, but, you know, these 14 years that you describe, um, wanting to learn more, wanting to know more, um, and, you know, as, as Ruby shared, at least in something that she talked to me about, you know, at various points taking courses not merely towards degrees, um, but because she was interested, because she was curious. She wanted to, that course on nutrition, right? Um, and, and then this question, where does my help come from? And this song of ascent, Psalm 121, has us picturing these pilgrims, right, that are, that are on their way to Jerusalem. And they're singing, they're, they're chanting aloud this, this psalm, and, and on their way to Zion, this, this holy hill of God, uh, they can't help but notice around them these, these other hills, right? These other high places that are around. And the psalmist looks around at those, and he surveys them, and, and there, there are places there that are shrines, uh, which, which contain these Asherah poles, uh, where unspeakable sacrifices are, are taking place to appease the gods, right? And, and the psalmist then asks, you know, seeing these in, within his vision, you know, from where will my help come from? Will it come from these hills? Where will it come from? And then the psalmist actually looks even higher still. Um, he, looks, um, he looks to the heavens. He looks to the sun, right, where, which is the Egyptian god. He looks to the moon, which at that time was the god of the Chaldeans. The stars, which were, were studied by ancient astrologers to discern their messages and, and their impact on the future. And, and he asks, you know, he, he looks at these things, these are the, the obvious and attractive and visible gods around them. And he asks, well, okay, but where's my help going to come from? And it's not just a question for the psalmist, right? Uh, you know, um, the psalmist, you know, in some ways attends and responds to his own question in a way similar to how Joshua answers a question. Um, he says, as for me and my house, my help, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And in, in some ways, you know, I think for us in the 21st century, um, we're still tempted to look to the high places for help, right? Some climb corporate ladders and, and aspire to be uh, in boardrooms on the 37th floor. I really like to hear um, stories about uh, Liana um, and getting published in the you know, medical journals. And maybe that was a you know a temp, you know maybe that was you know in in pastor talk we we talk about aspiring to higher spires. Maybe that was her. I don't think it was right. Um, 
you know, but, you know, I, I think about that. And, and some others might kind of look to, to Ottawa as a place to address all of societal ills. And it's not quite Capitol Hill like they, ha they have in the United States, but the metaphor is there, right? To, 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 to climb that hill, right? Hoping that, that you know, political will is going to help. And, and other people look, you know, literally at the, at the not literally, sorry, I, that was a bad use of the word literally. They look at the stars, that is, celebrities, right? They look at, they look at people that have prestige, right? Or, you know, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, you know, as long as it keeps going up, right, that's where their sight and, uh, and their, their help is going to come. And, and all these high places have their various allures, right? Um, uh, in various ways, we probably each can attest to have, having looked up to them at various points in our lives. And, and I suspect Liana was no different in, the, in this, these things than, than many of us. But then the, the psalmist, after considering all these high places... The, the psalmist kind of takes us in a different direction. The, the psalmist turns us towards a God that's big enough to trust and a God that's personal enough to care. Uh, in some translations, the psalmist calls God keeper, right? He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper, right? He's going to keep your life. And, and God is our keeper. God is Leanna's keeper. And, and I think about God as a keeper, of Leanna's keeper, you know, even in the midst of her various idiosyncrasies and quirks and foibles. I mean, I like to, to hear and even see pictures of her, you know, with this love for ice skating and, and even coaching. And uh, I, I heard, you know, that she even refused to eat at times spaghetti. It wasn't really her favorite, right? That she was a Canucks fan, uh, like the rest of us, I assume, a, a long-suffering Canucks fan. Right, that she had, you know, you know, these different ambitions, right? Uh, summer science programs, you know, figure skating judge, right? A love for conferences and traveling. We saw a picture in there of her doing jump rope for heart, which I think Centennial Christian School has been doing for about a million years, right? These, you know, that she made efforts to, to uh, every effort to travel to, to family gatherings uh, and reunions, that, that this traveling was important. And, and then somehow, you know, this traveling comes into Psalm 121 because sometimes it's referred to as the traveler's psalm, the, the sojourner's psalm. And, and even as it's used for this journey up towards Jerusalem, it speaks also of this bigger earthly journey, right? Psalm 121 speaks these words of promise about God's protection and providence along the, 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 the journey of life. Um, and as we heard from her autoethnography, um, some of Liana's ancestors immigrated, um, you know, from the Netherlands to Canada uh, sometime after World War II. Um, and, and in that era, one can only imagine what it would have been like for parents in, in Holland or Friesland to send their children off to a new land, right? Uh, they didn't know whether they'd see them again. I mean, they had hopes and dreams and, and fears anxieties, the joy and sorrow, and, 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 and they had this Psalm 121, you know, sometimes called the Traveler's Psalm, right, which, which many read through tears to their children as they sent them off to a new land, a land filled with uncertainty, but also a land filled with hope and a future. And as sojourners, as travelers, they didn't just face this question, you know, where does my help come from, but who is my companion along the way? And those parents sought to kind of teach their children as they sent them off one last time. So they, they sent them off with the traveler psalm, teaching their children and reminding themselves that you know, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, that, that God is their and our traveling companion. And, and then there's this facet of Psalm 121 that invites our trust and faith. But also at the same time, it can bolster our faith and our trust, in part because it's not something that you just recite on your own. I mean, you can, you can do that, and people certainly do and have through the ages, but it's also something to be sung together with, you know, fellow pilgrims along the way, right? That's how faith works. It's reinforced and it's strengthened when you talk about it on the way, uh, when you share your deep hopes and paralyzing fears, when you share your disappointments and your longings, the longings of your aching heart. 
Right? Psalm 121 reflects and teaches a childlike faith. On uh, April 23, 1962, uh, Karl Barth, Swiss-German theologian Karl Barth, he was speaking to some students in Chicago. He was kind of famous at the time, and, and so he gave this little speech, and there was a question and answer time afterwards. And a student asked Karl Barth, if, if Karl Barth could summarize, this great big theologian, right? could you summarize you know, his theology in a single sentence? And as the story goes, Barth responded by saying, well, in the words of a song I learned on my mother's knee, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I, I was struck by what Ruby uh, quoted earlier from Leanna's Bible, right? That passage from Isaiah 40, right? Set apart by Leanna's own hand in pink highlighter, right? Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And, and maybe, maybe God is inviting you again this day to wonder, even in the midst of your tears, as you look up the mountains around us, the strongholds and all sorts of high places in your own life, maybe God's inviting us to ask ourselves, from where does my help come from? And in the midst of unspeakable, unexplainable grief and loss, in the midst of all hurt and heartache and lament and confusion, will we run to other high places? Or will we return to the only safe haven and stubbornly profess, no, my help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And, and will you receive this promise that the Lord who made heaven and earth was and is and will be Leanna's keeper? And that this God is your keeper too. And will you, like parents sending children to a foreign country, bless Leanna on her way? You not accept a tragedy like this as merely fate, not resign death to the power of the universe, not withdraw into yourself, but stubbornly, through tears, send Leanna off ahead of you in and on a new adventure to a land filled with hope and a future. And as a sojourner, as a traveler yourself, left behind, will you hear the comfort of not just where does my help come from? But who is my companion along the way? I mean, another name for this traveling companion in the New Testament becomes Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And next week, Advent begins where we start looking at Jesus and God and, and how God came to us in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, and, and that he is, in fact, with us. And so may you know God's presence today as God journeys with you, and may you stubbornly insist, God is my traveling companion. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will watch over my coming and going both now and forevermore. In the name of Emmanuel God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.